What is going on guys, Shin here from Zero Media. In today's episode of CB550 Cafe Racer Rebuild Series, we're gonna be taking apart the top end of the CB550. So it's been about two to three weeks since I last filmed an update video on the Cafe Racer. Um, what I did in the last episode is basically removed everything I wanted to get powder coated black so that I can take it to my guy Jordan from Warhawk Powder Coating. He's a guy who initially did the frame of the bike after I chopped it up and welded everything together and the coating has been holding out awesome. He's located here in Michigan and that's the guy I take to powder coat my stuff. He's also powder coating the wheels for my FTRX7 at the same time. They'll be surprised for that because I haven't uh, disclosed the color yet for you guys but long story short I have taken the rear swing arm, front rim, rear rim and a couple parts here and there, brake components to Jordan so that he could get started on powder coating. But what we're gonna do today is go ahead and get this top end of the motor off which I will consider the valve cover. Cover here, there's another cover here, and then the top of the head comes off here, and then the bottom end of the head comes off here as well. So it's like multiple head gaskets and valve cover gaskets, and uh, these are notorious for leaking. A lot of new CB owners are asking me, like, see Zero, my bike is leaking, should I be worried about it? I'm like, Nah, nah, if it's leaking excessively, yeah, but if it's not, it's just the way these bikes are. So my bike has always been leaking. It's just not something I worried about too much. But now that this build is becoming like a show bike quality build, should I say, I am paying more close attention to uh, small details. In winter of 2019 this year, I might end up taking apart the whole engine to rebuild it from scratch. Before we get to taking apart the valve cover today though, let's talk about some of the updates I've done to the bike off the camera. First thing you notice is that I got a 7 inch headlight from a company called 4into1.com. They basically have all kinds of CB550, CB350, CB750, any 4 cylinder motorcycle Honda parts. So check them out, 4into1.com if you're looking for any upgrades for your motorcycle, OEM or aftermarket. So what I got here is a 7 inch headlight with the lens with the mesh setup, all black, gloss black. What I did off the camera though was this lens was clear at first and as soon as it came in, I wanted to give like a different look to the bike. So I went ahead and used this JDM yellow fog light spray. After spray painting it yellow, I used the UV resistant non-yellowing clear coat to finish up the job. So that's what this looks like right now. As you notice, this is a bottom mount headlight. On my initial Cafe Racer build, I mounted the headlight on the forks, which is the traditional way of mounting headlights and also the easiest way. But I really wanted to show off this sexy gold fork as much as possible. So I didn't want to add the headlight bracket on the side and kind of ruining the look. And what you see here is a quick mock-up of a metal bracket system that I created which is mounted to the tank stop should I say on the Cognito Motors lower clamp so these bolts holding the tank stops on the left and right side of the motorcycle is also being used to hold this custom headlight bracket piece which to be honest is too thin right now and it's wobbly so I created this bracket just to get an idea of where I want the headlight to be not just in front and back positioning but also in height positioning. I just wanted to get an idea of where I want this headlight to be. So if you come down here to the bottom of the front forks, I have painted the uh, original Zixo 600 lower end. I have also removed the brackets that was used to mount the stock fender. If you come over here, I also painted the calipers. These are the Tokiko brake calipers from Jixo 600. And what I ended up doing was instead of having Tokiko, T-O-K-I-C-O, I just shaved everything off but the zeros to kind of give a unique look, right? Because these are media. So I kept the zero, I don't know, just to try something different. I'll see if I like it or not, but uh, that's how it looks now. As for brake pads, I just got some generic brake pads to freshen things up uh, to replace these old ones. The old brake pads weren't too bad, but the issue with reusing used brake pads on a brand new rotor is that it might give the rotor an uneven wear or uneven coloring or what's called like a warping and it might leave uh, unnecessary debris on fresh rotor. So what I did was I went with a generic brake pad 
so I can run fresh pads with fresh rotors, which is what you see here. These are fresh black aftermarket rotors, which is kind of dirty right now because it's been just sitting in the garage. But these are the rotors that's gonna be going on the bike. It's gonna look so aggressive. I've already test fitted this uh, before just to check the diameter. I might make sure when you guys are ordering this that the inner diameter matches the outer diameter of the hub right here. And also the number of bolts. This is a six bolt hub that is made for 2006 or 600. Depending on the year, you might have six bolts, you might have different diameter, ID, OD. So make sure you match that up. Make sure you take measurements before you start ordering stuff. While we're talking about front end, let's talk about clip-ons. These are 50 millimeter clip-ons. And the issue with the Jixxer 600 from 2006 is that it is 50 millimeters up top, 48 millimeters down here and it goes back to 50 millimeters down here and where you want to add the clip bones is around here so in order to mount the correct size clip bones at 48 millimeters you either need to use 50 millimeter clip on to clear the top and add additional stress to clamp it down to 48 or you need to oversize the 48 millimeter clip bones to clear the top and then correctly get clamped onto here. What I did was I bought a 50 millimeter clip-ons and kind of shaved off the center there, right? Clear the top, came down and clamped down, but uh, this required me to shave off so much metal off this clip-on that I wasn't feeling safe anymore in terms of this clip-on holding on, on like highway speeds and vibrations and maybe even potholes. So what I'm gonna do is trash this 50 millimeter clip-ons, get a 48 millimeter, shave the ID just a little bit so that it clear the upper 50 millimeter portion and then clamp onto the 48 millimeter as it should. Now I'm running into this situation because of lack of research on my end because some Jixxer 600 forks depending on the year which you can clearly see when you look at the pictures on eBay has consistent fork diameter up top so some are like 48 millimeters all the way into the lower clamp and then it expands into 50 and then 50 consistently which makes your life much easier because you can just get a 48 slide it down clamp it and that would be a much easier way of doing things so learn from my mistakes guys i already have the 06 Zixer front end so it is what it is i'll figure it out and i want to mention another solution to this exact issue is uh what's called a split type clip-ons instead of this clip-on system pinching in like this it would literally open up there is a hinge here at the bottom which would open up like that so you can literally come in from the side and clamp onto the fork from the side i've been wanting to order that but every place that sells that is out of stock so i got tired of waiting for the split type 48 millimeter clip-on so i just Order the 48 millimeters. I'm gonna shave it off and see if that works. As for the levers and the control side of things, I got here the, so I was gonna run the stock Nishin Jixxer 600 front brake reservoir with the piston system, which I always recommend to go with stock piston that is designed for the stock caliper piston size. I bought these used ASV Shorty adjustable levers. So both on the brake side, and clutch side, I have aftermarket adjustable shorty clip-ons. I haven't really seen cafe racers with shorties on before, but uh, I wanted to give that a try because as much as I want this cafe racer to look awesome and retro and badass, I also want it to be functional and adjustable to my own life. I finally bought a bench grinder. I cannot believe I waited this long to buy a bench grinder in my life. This thing is awesome. I bought it for cheap on uh, uh, Amazon, made by Wen. Super happy, model number 4276. One side, I put a wire brush and wire brushing has made my life so much easier as opposed to like a drill type wire brush or uh, angle grinder type wire brush attachment. So that's it for an update. And in today's episode, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and get the valve cover removed. I have here the valve cover gasket and I also have the upper cover gasket as well. So again, first thing you wanna do is go ahead and knock all these screws out by using a impact screwdriver like this. Just make sure it's nice and loose, which I already did off camera and uh, you should be good to go.
All right, guys, and the dive cover is off the bike. In case you're wondering, I am wearing like five different outfits in this video simply because I'm just trying to squeeze in this project between all my other five different builds going on simultaneously and renovating the house. So I'm just trying to work on this bike as much as I can with the little time I have. So what I wanted to show you though during the time lapse, if you notice, was that I was holding up all these different packages. What I was trying to do was replace these stock uh, Japanese standard screws bolts with these brand new shiny socket cap bolts. So, you know, I was just trying to show you as much as possible what kind of size and length and thread pitch that I was using for my build. And because these bolts come in so many different sizes, I wanted to make sure I have the new one put in here before I took the whole thing apart. So what I have here is the replacement bolt stuck in the old valve cover. And here is a trick I want to show you also is when you have a job with a lot of bolts like this, what I like to do is grab a piece of cardboard and basically create a mock-up, a map of where these bolts go. So what I like to do is put your piece on top, make an outline with a sharpie, penetrate these bolts through the cardboard, and I will show you that just in a second here. Um, I got the outline of the valve cover here. This is the front side. And what I'm gonna do is, once the holes I created for the bolts, I'm just gonna put it through this cardboard while I clean this valve cover out so that I don't lose track of which bolt goes where, just like that. All right guys, so here's what it looks like. The uh, upper cover, it's nice and simple. It just got four same size long bolts left and right. And then there's two short ones on uh, upper and lower side. So that's that, nothing crazy. So I didn't bother using cardboard layout method there. But here is what I got, right? The cardboard is now sitting on top of a recycle bin with bolts sticking out from the bottom. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and clean the covers off, um, polish it, and maybe even possibly clear coat it so that it's good to go to be installed on the motorcycle. And one tool I like to use, as I mentioned in the past, when it comes to cleaning off the valve cover, or any previous gaskets is to use this tool by 3M. Just hooks up to your drill, spins real nice, and gets rid of all the existing gasket pieces and debris. So you have a nice, fresh surface to put your brand new gasket on. All right guys, so let me show you what I got here now. As for the top cover and the side cover pieces, I was able to uh, polish it and then clear coat it and it came out pretty cool. I like this texture to be honest, uh, where it gives you that brushed aluminum type look. So I went ahead and just clear coated it. But as for the valve cover, I started uh, polishing it and it just wasn't getting the results I wanted. This was just way too beat up to save and clear coat. So what I ended up doing was I ended up using a high temperature flame proof engine primer with a high temperature engine uh, silver color spray paint and then clear coat it on top of it. If this looks weird after installation, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the valve cover and the side pieces to match this. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this together on a bike and see what it looks like. And I also want to talk about this gasket here. This is the OEM gasket that's gonna go on the valve cover. Um, you have one for the valve cover itself and then another smaller piece to go on the top cover, whatever this thing is called. So you see the groove there. And you know, while it works great for, I don't know, like a year or two, when the CB550 engines see high temperature conditions, low temperature conditions in storage, these rubber gaskets just tend to become brittle and it doesn't work as it should, which is I think why this bike was leaking oil up top and the reason why really I'm doing this project today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put these rubber gaskets in the valve cover for now and then uh, torque everything down and see what the bike looks like. So guys, here's a little trick I learned over the years. When you have a gasket like this that needs to be mounted upside down, obviously, uh, as soon as you flip the valve cover, it's just gonna fall out. So what I like to do is put blue painter's tape, and you can do the same trick for the carburetors too when you're doing these gaskets on the bottom. 
is uh, that you put the paint in tape so it doesn't fall out even if you flip it upside down and then you put it on the bike and you slide these out from the side once you apply some pressure on it so this stays in, in place as it should and you're able to proceed and clamp on the bolts as needed I'll show you that in a time lapse here we go you know it's not the same real that you dusted off before so slide it in the tank put it in a VCR show me how you got in this printed command to the damn way that you died I can tell you it's the end All right, guys, and the valve cover is back on the motorcycle. Let me show you what's going on. And I swear, this is turning into like a Caesar Media fashion show with how often I'm changing in this episode. But let me show you what's going on here. So I got the valve cover back on the bike, and I left some of these covers open because I wanted to show you what's going on here in the inside. But while I have these caps open, I kind of wanted to show you how this motor works, right? So it's a four-cylinder engine, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. I think cylinder ones over there. So you got the intake and exhaust valves over here, and then you got your cam going across horizontally. So what you see here, and what I want to show you before I close this up, is a uh, valve tension adjustment right so with releasing this hex nut and spinning this bolt you can adjust the height of these rocker arms that's gonna be hitting against the valve what you need to do is spin the crank so you know at top the center TDC you're gonna be adjusting the cylinder number one and then you spin it some more you adjust cylinder number two and so on and so forth I haven't really looked at the owner's manual in detail in regards to how to adjust the valve clearance because I know that this bike doesn't need that right now what I plan on doing right now is as much as I want to tear down the whole engine and rebuild it from scratch I want to finish it up just for now just the way it was running before so that I can ride it for the season uh, the reason why I did this top end gasket repair was because it was I know for a fact leaking up here um, which again oil was the seeping to the bottom so I couldn't really tell if I was having head gasket uh, leaks I don't think I am I hope to God that I'm not but if I am then I'm just gonna have to tear apart the whole engine this winter time and in that time I can check the valve clearance and cam chain tension and all that stuff and I have more time available to really get into these small details of rebuilding engine but for today's episode I'm just gonna finish everything up put everything back together uh, and the reason why I'm doing this was because I'm waiting for the powder coater to finish my parts so once that comes back in I'm gonna go ahead and really uh, start assembling the bike together as you can see the front end is already kind of coming together I'm gonna explain that in the next episode for you guys so that is it for today guys I hope that was helpful I hope you found some value and uh, found this episode informational in terms of how to fix the leak in your valve cover which is a very very common issue on the c550 so thanks again for watching guys and i'll see you in the next episode peace out